Rising through the ranks from a rebellious teenager in the notorious suburbs to becoming the national president of the Comanchero Motorcycle Club, Alan Meehan's story is a roller coaster of power, intrigue, and danger. How did Alan navigate the complex world of biker culture? And why did Alan switch sides from the rebels to the Comanchero? Join us as we unravel the complex world of Alan Meehan, the most powerful biker boss in Sydney. Growing up in Miller, one of Sydney's roughest suburbs, Alan's early life molded him into a prime candidate for the bikey lifestyle. His distinctive love for designer clothes and tattoos, including a tribute to mafia boss John Gotti on his leg and outlaw boldly inked on the back of his neck, set him apart from the crowd. From an 18-year-old rebel navigating the gritty streets to eventually leading the Kenela chapter of the Rebels Outlaw Motorcycle Club, Alan's ascent in the bikey culture is remarkable. Despite humble beginnings, his affinity for the street life and frequent encounters with law enforcement only fueled his determination. A pivotal figure in Alan's life is Mark Buttle, an influential friend from his teenage years, a recurring character in this unfolding story. Despite their different paths, Buttle already entrenched in the underworld while Alan was a young bloke finding his way. The two clicked. Alan's early departure from Trinity Catholic College in Auburn signaled his plunge into the bikey world. His rebellious spirit earned him the name Little General among the rebels. Swiftly rising through their ranks, Alan soon became the chapter president, forming close ties with the infamous Vela family, especially Jesse Vela. Despite his allegiance, he maintained a connection with Buttle. In a surprising turn of events, Alan decided to switch sides, patching over to the common Chiro MC. Speculation arises that Buttle may have played a role in this move. Alan faced a period in jail from 2014 to 2016 for possessing a pistol, but upon release, he resumed his climb through the common Chiro ranks. By early 2021, he achieved the position of commander of the Canberra chapter. This promotion followed the tragic murder of the previous commander, Pitasoni Uluvalu, in July 2020. The nightclub brawl at Kokomo's in Canberra, captured on CCTV and witness phones, ended with Pitasoni stabbed in the neck by Frederick Tuifua. The aftermath of this incident marked a significant turning point in Alan Meehan's journey. In August 2020, a significant chapter unfolds in this saga. Frederick Tuifua, charged with the murder of Pitasoni Uluvalu, gets apprehended at Calvary Hospital. Accompanying him is Max Budak, shot three times during the brawl at Kokomo's nightclub. Tuifua eventually pleads guilty to murder, receiving a 20-year sentence with a non-parole period of 10 years. Budak, implicated in the nightclub fray, gets six months for a fray and an additional six months for assaulting another inmate. Following the tragic demise of Uluvalu, Alan Meehan emerges as a key figure in the Biki underworld. Respected among both the gang's seasoned members and fresh recruits, Meehan's entire adult life revolves around biker gangs. In 2022, he cements his status as the most powerful outlaw biker boss. The Comanchero Motorcycle Club appoints him as the new national president, succeeding Mick Murray. Murray's arrest in April 2022 over the alleged 2019 execution-style shooting of Mitat Rasimi triggers this leadership change. Rasimi, associated with drug kingpin Tony Mokbo and suspected ties to outlaw motorcycle gangs, was found shot multiple times while driving, allegedly murdered over a $300,000 debt owed by his brother Elat. Two other Comanchero bikers were previously charged with the crime. Alan Meehan announces his ascent to the role of Comanchero national president in true biker style. An Instagram post showcases his new title on a cut patch with the ominous words, you can't see the eyes of the demon until he come a callin'. Weeks later, a TikTok video features a gold custom-built Harley-Davidson V-Rod motorcycle in club colors, valued up to $100,000. Meehan, embracing the biker lifestyle, shares moments of opulence on a boat near Sydney Harbor Bridge with his wife. Dressed in designer wear and adorned with jewelry from Versace, Balenciaga, and Armani, their union reflects a staggering worth of around $122,000. Amidst the tough exterior, Alan reveals a softer side, posting pictures with his wife, accompanied by captions like, new robe, same love. However, as Alan ascends to the role of national president, law enforcement sees an opportunity to tighten the grip on the Comanchero. Shortly after assuming this leadership position, Alan is served with a serious crime prevention order by two New South Wales police officers. 
This order restricts him from associating with any bikey or crime figures, mandates a designated residence in New South Wales, and demands advance notice to the police for overnight stays elsewhere. The financial reins are tightened as well. Allen is limited to a single bank account and specific cards, forbidden from holding more than $10,000 in cash, and barred from using encrypted mobile phones. Even his private vehicles require police scrutiny with details of taxi or Uber trips to be reported within 24 hours. The criminal group's squad commander for New South Wales Police emphasizes Allen's status as a prime target, using these restrictions as a clear message to Comanchero leaders. Despite these limitations, Allen continues to send shockwaves through the underworld. In a surprising and bold move, Allen convinces Jesse Vela, heir to the rebels' Bicky Gang throne, to patch over and join the Comanchero. Jesse Vela, nephew of former Rebels President Alex Vela and cousin to the current President Damien Vela, becomes a key acquisition. This power move is particularly striking as it occurs shortly after the death of Rebels Kingpin Gino Vela, who is also Jesse's father. The poaching of Jesse Vela further underscores Allen's influence and strategic maneuvering within the Bicky hierarchy. In a testament to the Comanchero's autonomy, an underworld source revealed to News Corp that Jesse's recruitment showcases the club's ability to act on its terms. Alan Meehan proudly posted a photo on Instagram with Jesse Vela, both wearing club colors, standing proudly in front of a motorcycle adorned with the Comanchero insignia. The caption, Welcome to A-Grade, emphasizes the club's confidence and influence. However, as the saying goes, being on top often attracts unwanted attention, and Alan Meehan was no exception. On February 9, 2023, the national president found himself in the spotlight for a different reason, his arrest. The early morning raid on the Gold Coast was executed due to an outstanding warrant alleging Allen breached a serious crime prevention order. Police claimed that Allen violated the order by not disclosing his temporary accommodations full address, neglecting to provide an intended return date to his primary residence, and possessing an encrypted communication device. Authorities asserted that almost immediately after the order was issued, Allen shut down his phone and headed to Queensland. Facing the Southport Magistrates Court, the prosecution argued that Allen failed to notify authorities of his relocation to Queensland with his family. In response, Allen's barrister, Angus Edwards, contended that his client wasn't attempting to flee, but had moved to Queensland for safety. Alleged threats against suspected Comanchero members prompted this decision with New South Wales police informing Allen about a $3 million bounty on his head. The court learned that Allen Meehan had preemptively paid a year's worth of rent, and his child was enrolled in a Gold Coast school. Despite opposition from police prosecutor Sergeant Greg McKenzie, who argued against bail, Allen Meehan was eventually extradited back to New South Wales to face trial. Once back in his home state, Allen petitioned the Supreme Court for bail. After presenting his case, the court granted him bail, setting a bail amount of $150,000, coupled with strict conditions. During his trial in July 2023, Alan Meehan arrived at court expressing confidence about the upcoming hearing. Known for his love of designer brands, he sported a gray suit adorned with a Varsace heritage print tie, a matching pocket square, and a gold watch. Initially pleading not guilty to four charges of breaching a serious crime prevention order, Meehan later opted for a guilty plea on a combined charge, following successful negotiations by his lawyer. The police withdrew the remaining three charges. On July 6, 2023, Alan Meehan avoided imprisonment, receiving a $5,000 fine and a two-year community correction order. Subsequently, he stepped down as national president, creating an opening for a successor. Melbourne-based house painter Vimir Sarashevich swiftly assumed the position. Despite the geographical shift, sources suggest that Sydney still holds sway, especially in orchestrating the commission, a mafia-style tax imposed by the Comanchero on drug imports into Australia. Despite pressures leading some members to relocate, Sydney remains the epicenter of the drug trade's power dynamics. 